What's good, what's good, YouTube? American Rx at it again. Um, how are you people doing? Um, shout out to the subscribers, shout out to the viewers. Um, thank you for viewing on uh, the live stream um, over in Dart Dartman X um, TV as we were premiering West Indian Tribal Society. Uh, the GoFundMe links will be in the description of this video. Um, let's get to it. So, today I'll just be building on um, Quetzalcoatl, um, Mesa American God, or should I say, the, one of the ancestors from the Americas. And the reason why I'm building this uh, article, this topic, is because uh, we need to know that we have ancient um we have an ancient story you know what i'm saying didn't just you, this didn't just pop out of nowhere no one is making this stuff up i mean they try to downplay it and call these things mythology but if you really really look in the codices of these uh, names or these uh events you're gonna see that it actually was documents that prove that these um, elements are these people are actually real all right so let's get to it it's a cult it's a cult Maya name for Kuku clan right Kuku Khan from Nahoto Nahato Ketsali tail feather of Ketsal bird Paramokar Paro right Marcus Machino Messino and cuttle snake. Okay, so in other words, so it's a bird, it's a bird snake. The feathered serpent. Feathered serpent is like a dragon, right? The, the dragon has scales. I guess the scales will be another name for feathers. Okay. One of the major deities of the ancient Mexican pantheon representation of the feathered snake occurred as early as the Tio T Ucan civilizations civilization third to eighth century ce on the central plateau at that time quetzalcoatl seems to have been conceived as a vegetation god an earth and water deity close closely associated with the rain and block right so these are images from one of the temples okay still here to this day With the immigration of Nahua speaking trash from north, Quetzalcoatl's cult underwent drastic changes. The subsequent Toltec culture, 9th through 12th centuries, centered at the city of Tula, emphasized war and human sacrifice linked with worship of heavenly bodies. Quetzalcoatl became the god of the morning and evening star, and his temple was the center of ceremonial life in Tula. That's a carving, okay? See the broad nose? And they try to knock the nose off, okay? In Aztec times, 14th through the 16th century, Quetzalcoatl was revered as a patron of priests, the inventor of the calendar and of books, okay? The protector of the goldsmith and other craftsmen he was also identified with the planet Venus as the morning and evening star. Quetzalcoatl was a symbol, symbol of death and resurrection. Okay, so if you do the, if you do the contrast across the cross reference, who's the God of the dead and resurrection? These times, Christ, right? So a lot of these stories are just um, remix version of the ancient story that's already there, right? Because we are talking about death and resurrection. We're talking about the crucifixion and then the raise from the dead after three days, right? And that sounds like so-called Christ, right? With the companion of Zolotl, a dog head God, he was he was said to have descended to the underground hell of Mictlan gather the bones <coughs> of the ancient dead 
Those bones he anointed with his own blood, giving birth to the man who inhabit the present universe. Okay? That's like a creation story. Now, I want you all to pay attention to these images, right? Look at these images, good. Right? Because they came out of the codices, right? The codex. And they also did a um a revised version of these codices now. The revised version doesn't look doesn't depict the, the, the images you see now. They all they, they lightened up the images up, okay? So I always know that they do revised versions and every, of everything and remix it. So the images you're seeing now isn't necessarily the images that's really in these codices, okay? Or these codex. So look at these doesn't do, doesn't these look look at the uh the tone skin tone right ancient people right of the americas right so this is this is another confirmation that our ancient ancestors as have already as was already here and been here before, uh before even time immor immor immemorial okay right before even time immemorial, right? Um, because <laughs> there's no beginning and there's no end, okay? Was always, was, and always will be, okay? So up here it's in Aztec round, round dance, Aztec round dance for Quetzalcoatl and Zolo, Zolotl, dog headed god, who is Quetzalcoatl's companion, detailed from a facsimile codex. Barbonicus, Audio 26, 1520, original in the Chamber of Deputies, Paris. So they have all these um, images over there in Europe, right? And also here, uh, like this is Smith Smithsonian Institute, because you really could um, just by looking at these images and just by going through these documentations, right, of our ancestors, you could literally activate that. Um, sleeping dna that's all it's within all of us who are descendants of these people all right or who have ties um to blood you know what i'm saying as they did migrate all over the americas and to other lands as well okay one important body of myths describes quetzalcoatl as a priest king okay of tula capital of Toltecs. He never offered human victims, only snakes. Applies. Okay? But the god of the night sky, Tezcatlip, Poka, expelled him from Tula by performing feats of black magic. Quetzalcoatl wandered down to the coast vine water, the Atlantic Ocean. Then immolated himself on a pyre merging as a uh, as the planet venus according to another version he embarked upon a raft made of snakes and disappeared beyond the eastern horizon okay so disappearing around the what eastern horizon he disappeared into was that uh the migration towards uh, europe you gotta ask these questions the legend of the the victory of Tess Catholic Poker over the feathered serpent probably reflects historical facts. The first century of the Toltec civilization was dominated by the Teo Tihuacan culture with its inspired ideals of priestly rule and peaceful behavior. The pressure of the northern immigrants brought about a social and religious revolution with a military ruling class seizing power from the priests. It's a cult defeat symbolizes the downfall of the classic theocracy, right? His sea voyage to the east should probably be connected with the invasion of Yucatan, okay? By the Itza, a tribe that showed strong Toltec features. It's a cult calendar name was Se Acto. One read the belief that the world that he would return from the east in a one read year 
that the Aztec sovereign Montezuma II to regard. Okay, so you know about Montezuma, Montezuma right? To regard the Spanish conqueror Herman Cart, the, the Spanish conqueror Herman Cortes. Okay, so this is prior to colonial colonization. All right, these were the kingdoms over here that we were priests, we were we were, we were um, high priests, and all these things. Our ancestors were very connected with nature, with the earth. Okay, so let me see Montezuma. I believe I have a picture of Montezuma. Showing uh, Monte, uh, Montezuma. But Montezuma II also spelled Moctezuma, uh, 1520. Then, uh, Titlan within modern Mexico City, ninth Aztec Empire of Mexico, famous for his dramatic confrontation with Spanish, with the Spanish conquistador Herman Cortes. Okay, 1502, Montezuma succeeded his uncle Atuzot. Zotto as the leader of an empire that had reached its greatest extent, stretching what is now Honduras and Nicaragua. Now, Honduras is where the Mosquito Indians uh, they were during the, uh, the colonial invasion of the islands, all right? Nicaragua also. People from Honduras and Nicaragua, they speak what we call Pato as we speak in the islands, okay? But we are very connected people but that was weakened by the resentment of the subject tribes to increasing demands for tribute and victims for religious sacrifices Montezuma was, was commander of the army organized extensive ex expedition of conquest in defense of Kutso, Kutsilo Pak okay Slide back over to uh, Petzacope. Just want to get a perspective of that. The, these are we were we our ancestors fought fight for survival. Okay, you weren't we weren't weak. Okay, you weren't we weren't just laying down and allowing them to just take over. Just take over. It was not type of party. Okay. We were real warriors, okay? And his common invoice, because 1519, the year in which they landed on the Mexican Gulf Coast, was a one read year. In addition to his guise as a plum serpent, Quetzalcoatl was often represented as a man with a beard, okay? So, what they're talking about, we don't have beards, okay? We're the bearded, we're the bearded men, okay? High priest, okay? As a he had to win God, he was shown with a mask, two protruding tu tubes, to which the wind blew, and a car typical of Aztec people of eastern central Mexico, the temple of Quetzalcoatl, and Tenochtitlan, the Aztec capital was a round building, a shape that fitted God's personality and he had to, he had to, right? So our, 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 our buildings were made circular, okay? For a reason, for like when storms come, it just goes around the building instead of square now, okay? These, 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 these structures are made square, okay? So the storm comes and knocks it down easily. Circular terms were believed to please the Hakto because they offered no sharp obstacles to the wind. Round monuments occur particularly often Aztec territory. So we gotta get back to building our temples as a circle, okay? Because it uh gets a cut rule over the days that bore the name the Hihkat wind and over the 18 and 13 day series of the ritual calendar. He was also the ninth of the 13 gods of the daytime powers, powers. Although he was generally listed as one of the first ranked deities, no ceremonial was dedicated to his cult as a god of learning, of writing, and of books. Quetzalcoatl.